Electricity is a vital source of energy used daily by millions of Australian households, businesses and work sites. While the Australian Electricity Network is one of the safest and most reliable in the world, it is not without its dangers. Every year in Australia, workers die or suffer serious injuries from contact with live power lines above and below the ground. But the fact is, these incidents should never happen because a lot of the time they happen to workers who know about the dangers of working with electricity. Workers who understand the risks, but still find themselves in hazardous situations because the right steps have not been taken to ensure their workplace safety. Electricity is a necessary part of modern day life. We just have to be conscious of our safety when working around it. Don't let electricity be a risk to your life or your workmates. Always follow safe working practices, assess the risks and plan the job at hand. Remember, you're being safe because your family needs you. We've just watched an incident where someone was killed. The kind of tragedy that should not have happened but did and does too often. What went wrong here? The power lines on this work site, like others, carry electricity which, if contacted, can kill you. To avoid injuries, look around and identify where power lines are located and mark them at ground level before you start working outdoors. Talk to your boss or foreman and take note of any areas on the site which could be hazardous. Plan safe travel paths for machinery and equipment away from power lines. If you need to come within safe approach distances, you must arrange to have the power switched off. Sure, you might be so skilled at your job that you hardly have to think about what you're doing anymore. But this is when incidents occur. By making contact with these overhead power lines, the crane completed an electrical circuit with the electricity passing through the crane to earth and also through the worker touching the sling. The crane operator wasn't electrocuted because in this case he was in the cabin and the current didn't pass through his body to reach the ground. For the moment he was safe and remembered the first thing he should do was to try and break the crane's contact with the power lines. But the crane's controls were disabled by the power surge. Even so, from his training, he knew the best course of action was to stay put in the cabin and wait for the power to be shut off by the local electricity authority. Only if and when there is a visible sign of fire should you get out of the cabin. In this case, he jumped clear, making sure he didn't touch any part of the crane and the ground at the same time. That would have allowed the current to run through him. But even then, he was not out of danger. An electrical current flowing through the crane to earth has created an invisible radiating electrical field in the earth outwards from the crane. If he had walked or ran, one leg would have been at a different voltage from the other and the current would have flowed through his body, causing him to receive an electric shock. The answer was to keep his feet together in constant contact with the ground and shuffle or hop at least eight metres away from the crane. All right, he was out of danger, but what about his mate? Whatever happens, don't try and go to the assistance of anyone who has received an electric shock or let anybody else. All too often, secondary deaths can occur because others get electrocuted trying to help earlier victims. It's a tough ask, but even if it looks like the power lines are dead, keep well clear by at least eight metres until the electricity authority arrives. They're the only ones who can tell you for sure if it's safe. Another hazard to be aware of is the potential for tyres to explode up to 24 hours after a vehicle contacts a power line. Create a 300 metre exclusion zone around the vehicle for a minimum of 24 hours. Following this, ensure the vehicle is thoroughly inspected for tyre and mechanical damage. 
OK, this was obviously a dramatisation, but it was based on real occurrences, unnecessary and, for the most part, avoidable injuries which happen on work sites every year to workers just like you. We were working on this pour and we had to get the boom tucked in pretty close underneath this power line. Jacko knew that we were well inside the no-go zone, but, well, we'd done it before, so we thought we'd be all right. Jacko made sure of that because, well, he's always a bit twitchy when it comes to power line. There are also specific clearances that you must maintain which can be found in the relevant codes of practice. What nobody noticed was uh, the power lines had got hot. Like it was a stinking hot day and they'd sagged down about a metre, we found out later. It was close enough to the boom to have caused us problems, even without what happened next. This storm was coming in, this big summer storm, and the winds had picked up. I remember seeing the power line starting to sway, and um, that's all it took. I mean, the power line didn't even touch the boom. The electricity just arced off straight onto the boom and shot down the chute straight into Jacko and made 33 kV. Boom. We all thought we knew the ropes when it came to safety. We should have looked. We sh should have just stopped and assessed the risks. Should have, could have. <sighs> what did we miss? Why did it happen? And why does it keep on happening? Every year, workers die or suffer serious injuries in incidents involving live power lines. Workers like you, who understand the dangers of electricity. Workers who knew the power lines were there, but were put in danger because the risks had not been properly assessed. So, what should have been remembered that day? That power lines can sag on hot days, changing clearance distances. That you should always work outside of the no-go zone that strong winds can cause power lines to sway, that dim light can make power lines hard to see, that you don't have to be in direct contact with the power line to be injured. Electricity can arc across open space. All of these potential hazards should have been identified and adequate planning undertaken before work commenced on the site. And steps should have been taken to ensure contact with the power lines didn't occur. And of course, the same principles apply not only when operating cranes and booms, but also when moving many other forms of equipment and machinery regularly used on work sites, including scaffolding, tipper trucks and elevated work platforms. Remember that tiger tails are only designed as a visual indicator. They are basically just reminders that power lines are present and they do not insulate power lines. Whenever a work site is situated near overhead power lines or when equipment is being moved around close to them, contact can occur. But it's not just overhead power lines that are a hazard. At least you can see them. Hidden hazards lurk beneath the ground too. Work site deaths and injuries are also caused when contact is made with underground cables, including earths. And as more and more power installations are run underground, the chance of hitting one is becoming more likely. So, what should you do? Firstly, always assume that underground cables are there until you know otherwise. Before you start work, dial 1100 or visit the Dial Before You Dig website 1100.com.au and consult the local authority to find out the location of underground cables. Remember, it's the law. So it's the essential first step for every job. Validate the plans before you dig by using cable location technologies such as GPS or ground penetrating radar and mark up the differences. Pothole at regular intervals to confirm exact cable locations and importantly, communicate the exact locations of cables to your workmates. When using plans from Dial Before You Dig, double check when they were last updated.
as cable depths can vary after road upgrades or new developments. You should never drive a probe into the ground looking for cables. It may sound obvious, but people actually do it and get hurt. Sometimes you will find sand, tape or marked bricks or panels to indicate the presence of underground cables. Other times you'll find a conduit or pipe with the cables enclosed inside. Be aware that direct buried cables could also be present and that new electrical cables are sometimes laid using old conduits. If you think you are close to an underground power cable, excavate by hand carefully. If you are excavating where cables might be, use an observer but keep them well away from the hole. And of course, if any underground cables are accidentally damaged, don't attempt to approach, touch or repair them. Keep the machine operator in the cabin and clear the area by at least 8 metres. Notify the local electricity authority immediately and wait until they give the all clear before proceeding. Electricity and power lines are a necessary part of working life, but hazards can be avoided. While every situation is different, being aware of the hazards posed by power lines and taking necessary safety precautions can save lives, even your own. For more information on electrical safety and how to keep your workplace safe, contact your local electricity authority.